In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use GNS3 to create interactive network topology diagrams. Now in the past, I've often used Visio or draw.io to create network topology diagrams. Draw.io is a free website. I could select network, select different types of topologies. So for example, this one, and create a new network topology diagram based on this initial topology. So I could move devices around, I could delete devices and so forth and so on. But I've started to use GNS3 more and more to create network topology diagrams. And one of the reasons for that is the use of affinity icons in GNS3. You can also, from version 2.2 of GNS3, create interactive network topology diagrams. So I'm gonna drag this cloud into the workspace and I'll run that on the GNS3 VM. Now that's not such a great icon, so what I'll do here is change the symbol to affinity square. So I'm gonna select affinity square blue, I'm gonna search for a switch, and in this case, I'll select multi-layer switch. Now please note, this is a cloud in GNS3 but I'm going to connect to a physical switch in my network through this. To do that, right click on the device, click configure, go to miscellaneous, and specify the console type that you wanna to use to access this device. Telnet, VNC, SPICE, HTTP, HTTPS are currently supported. SSH, Jeremy tells me, will be added to later versions of GNS3 but for the moment I'm gonna use Telnet to access the switch and click OK. Now notice what happens. Right click, click console. I can access a physical device in my network through the GNS3 topology. This is a physical device. This is not a device running in GNS3. So as an example, you can see the name here is Core3750. Show version shows us that this is a 3750 switch. 3750 switches are not supported in GNS3. What I'm doing here is telnetting to that device from my PC via the GNS3 graphical user interface. Now what I could do is add other devices to the topology. And in this case, I'm gonna connect via the GNS3 VM again. Right click change symbol, I'll use affinity circle blue here and search for a router image. So router like that. Let's call this router one. Right click on this device, configure miscellaneous, select the protocol, in this case it'll be Telnet once again, specify the IP address, port number, default is 23, click OK. And once again, right click, select console, and I'm now able to access this device in my network topology. This once again is a physical router in my network. This is not a device running in GNS3. Now obviously I have to specify the right password, so let me try and get that right. Okay, so there you go. It's a Cisco 1941 router, show version, shows me that. Notice it's running Cisco iOS, this version of software. This router has been up for two weeks, six days. It's a physical device. So show diag shows me what's physically connected to this router. You can see it's got a motherboard, two gigabit ethernet interfaces. No other modules have been inserted into this router. So, if you had a bigger router with different slots and modules, you'd see more than that. But again, this is a physical router. It's not a virtual router. Now, one of the nice things in GNS3 is you can go to view, snap to grid, and you can get these devices to snap to a grid so it's easier to draw nice topologies. You can change the size of this grid. I've actually made it quite small here. But if you go to edit preferences, in version 2.2 .2 and later of GNS3, 
you can specify the default drawing grid size. So you can change the grid size if you want to. I'll just leave that at the default. And what you could do now is you could add a link from one device to the other. Now I'm not gonna do that because these are physical devices in my topology. They are not actually connected in GNS3. So what I'll do is move that to the grid. Notice it snapped there and then just connect them visually. You can also stop snapping to the grid if it's not doing what you want it to do and you don't wanna have it snap exactly to the grid. But notice there's an example of a basic topology. Now in my physical network, those two devices are not actually connected to each other. This 3750 switch is actually connected to a, another switch. In this case, it's an SG300 switch using this local interface. So I could copy that and then just add a note here and say that switch is connected to that router via that FOST Ethernet interface. On the router, it's got two interfaces connected to the switch using gigabit 01 and gigabit 00 connected to the switch on those interfaces. So I don't wanna bore you doing a whole topology here, but once again, I could say that that router is connected to that switch using that interface. Now to be actually correct here, I'd need to add another switch to the topology and specify my SG switch. So as an example, I'll go back to affinity square blue, specify switch. In this case, it's a layer two switch and put it in the topology. Now it's not snapping here. So what I'll do to make sure it goes to the right place is snap it to the grid. And then what I'll do is I'll remove that and then what I'll do is duplicate this. Move it here and now my topology is more like the real thing. Now these are physical devices once again. I, I won't bother filling the rest in because hopefully you get the idea. But GNS3 actually allows you to run devices locally. And this is where you can connect devices much more easily. So you could, as an example, use this interactive method, or you could just use GNS3 to create a topology, even though it's not physically connecting to any devices, you're just using it to draw pretty pictures. So let's say here I've got a router. Notice this is an iOS V router. Here's a switch. I can get it to snap to the topology. And then what I could do is connect them this way. And the advantage of doing it that way is when I move the device around, the connections are actually made and will move as I move the device. So here's router one, or let's say router two, and here's let's say switch one in the GNS3 topology. Now these are virtual devices running in GNS3, so I can start them up as virtual devices and then I can access these devices within GNS3. The important thing to note is I am running both physical devices and virtual devices in GNS3. And I could connect them. So I could say that they connected this way as an example. Even though that's not actually how they physically connected, I could draw it that way. Or I could use a NAT cloud here and connect my virtual network to the physical network. This will allow my virtual devices to access the physical devices. I could use a cloud here rather than a NAT cloud so use this cloud, which will bridge the interfaces rather than NAT them. But notice I'm connecting my virtual topology to my physical topology. And let's say here I'll specify a cloud like this. So there's my NAT cloud. And then I could say, okay, logically this is connected 
this way. Now, I want to keep this video fairly short, so I'm not going to try and make the topology perfect, but hopefully that gives you an idea of what's possible. As an example, if I connect to the console of that switch, here's my switch. Notice this is a virtual switch running in GNS3. This device uses Cisco IOS V software. I can get rid of the, the grid if I want to. I can change the zoom, etc. The point here is you can connect both virtual devices and physical devices in a GNS3 topology. You can get them to talk to each other using a NAT cloud. There's a whole bunch of things you can do. What I wanted to show you, however, mainly in this video, is the fact that you can use GNS3 to build topologies, change the layout of your topologies, and use this as a network diagram tool, but also use it as an interactive tool. So once again, I can access both physical devices, such as this 1900 switch, as well as virtual devices, such as the switch. The GNS3 team are continuing to add features to the software. This feature is available in version 2.2 and later of GNS3. Now, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. That really does help me. David Bobble, want to wish you all the very best.